So being a fishing YouTuber, I am always around boats, always on boats. I've even built a few boats myself, but one thing I've never done was go for a boat ride underground. And that is exactly what we're doing today. Check out that catfish. What is going on guys and welcome back to another awesome adventure. So I'm in Tennessee. I just left the PB Lodge. I was heading off somewhere. I wasn't sure where, but I was driving down the road and I saw a sign that said, take a boat ride in one of the largest underground lakes. And I was like, yes, 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 yes. Sign me up right now. Let's do it. So I hopped online. I just bought my ticket. It was only like 23 bucks, super cheap. And uh, we're about to go underground in a large cave that has a lake in it and take a little boat ride tour. So uh, that's freaking awesome. I'm about to hop out and go explore, but uh, let's go inside and check this place out. Ticket to get in, just be back up here in the lobby at 2.30, ready to go. 2.30, all right, yeah. sounds good. Yeah, right, there you go, man, thank you. All right, so I have about a 30 minute wait and I am freaking excited. I just know for a fact, this is gonna be awesome. I mean, an underground lake and there's boats down there. how they get boats down there? I'm definitely gonna ask them how they did it. We'll figure it out. <laughs> but uh, 30 more minutes and then we get to go underground in one of the largest underground lakes in the world. I'm not sure if it's in the world or just in the US or what, but uh, who cares? It's freaking underground and it's awesome. <laughs> Check out this trout. Rainbow trout from Lost Sea, 16 pounds, seven ounces. That's right, there's fish in this lake. Hopefully we see a bunch of them. But man, that is a huge rainbow trout. Holy crap, man. I would die if I caught that. That is so sick. Man, I hope we see some trout that big. So this is a one hour and 15 minute tour of the cave and the lake is at the very end of the cave. So uh, we have to climb down 145 feet and then we'll get to the lake and the fish. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump ahead to the lake part of this video. Show that first because that's the part I'm more interested in. And then at the end of this video, there will be the entire tour of the cave. And they talk about all the information of the cave and how they found it and all that stuff. It's actually pretty interesting. So if you wanna watch that, stick around. If not, click away. It's up to you, but uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and check out the largest underwater lake in the US. All right, there's a whole dock down here. That's freaking sweet. Here's the water. It's freaking crazy. Oh, was that a fish? Liger, just stay on the black I think I just saw the first fish. God, this water's so clear. These are some big old trout, man. Holy crap. That's what here. We did originally stock them in 1967 as part of an experiment. We tagged them with our name, number, and location. In hopes they'd find an exit, someone would find one and contact us. There's only one problem with that. We decided to feed them, and like most things, when you feed them, they never leave. So, they saw no reason to leave. We saw no reason we couldn't keep them. Now they act as our pets. They're fed every single boat ride, every single tour, and they're absolutely spoiled. Now, they can't reproduce down here naturally, though. We have to stock them every three to five years. Because of the smooth clay bottom and no current, their eggs just float to the top, and even these fish can't resist caviar. <laughs> here exploring in 1973, along the left wall here, 40 feet below the water is an 800 foot long tunnel, opening up to a chamber twice the size as this one, completely filled with water. This one only holds four and a half acres of water, that one holds nine. As they were exploring, they did begin to run out of lifeline, and the pressure change from their oxygen tanks caused a minor rock fall. Thankfully, no one was hurt, but it was deemed too dangerous to explore it any further. And that tunnel will actually be right back here in between these two lights. So about 40 feet below the water down here. 
in just a second. We will be approaching the feeding area. Just please remember to keep your hands inside the boats. These fish get very excited about their food, but I don't blame them. I do too. That's awesome. And they swim these boats like sharks. <laughs> That's a big one. Yeah. Now, any of the fish you're seeing right now are only two years old despite their size. Mm. So keep that in mind when you see some of these absolute monsters back here. Huge, I tell you. I'll show you guys Bentley. He's my favorite fish down here. <laughs> Bentley? You know him? I do. How do you tell him apart? Because he's shaped like an elk. Oh, really? He has scoliosis. Uh-oh. He's my favorite fish down here. And I like, there he is. Look at him. Oh, that one right there? Yeah. Nice. Right. That's our side of the water. That's Bentley? That's Bentley. He's my favorite fish down here. I adore him so much. This is amazing. Oh, oh I thought that was a big one. It's just two. <laughs> That's a little game I played on here. It's called Where's Bentley? Where's Bentley? Because <laughs> it pops up in the water. Oh, that one's a beast. They're huge. Look at them. feed it? Yep. Oh, All right. Is everyone ready for the feeding frenzy? Yay. In three, two, one. Yeah, get it. Food, so I like to throw him like a few pieces just for him. It's right there. Is that him? Maybe. Get it, Billy. Get it, Billy. Because he's so tiny and he can't really get it. Jeez, that is awesome. They're all trained. They are. And they're bored again. These fish have a one track mind. <laughs> Now, can everyone see this low hanging rock right back here? This is the deepest part of the lake. In between those two lights is 70 feet deep. Dang. This is as far back as we can go. If we were to go any further, we will get stuck to the ceiling despite how strange that sounds. So to avoid all that, I will take you all to the spot of our most recent rock fall. It actually happened last Wednesday. <laughs> kidding, kidding. <laughs> I just like seeing you guys react to that. <laughs> You know, usually it's the opposite reaction of excited that people have. So I just like to scare you guys a little bit. But then there's a few that get super excited and I'm like, I'm so sorry. Now, despite popular belief, these fish are not blind. They only lose 20% of their eyesight. We keep the lights on here 12 hours a day and the dock lights remain on 24. They do, however, lose 75% of their color. But they only use their color for mating. If they can't see each other, it doesn't really matter. We all live through quarantine, right? Because <laughs> most of my jokes are pretty bad. Oh, you want to hear bad jokes? Yeah. All right. What do, what do vegetarian zombies eat? What? Grains. All right. Our most recent rock fall actually happened 2,000 years ago. Here at these jagged rocks, all the way to the dock lights, we lost 500 feet of rock. Wait, 94 tons all together. How we know it's 2,000 years ago? Because they're right over here. Do y'all remember that drapery or cave bacon from before? It can only grow on a clean, flat surface like this. And we did isotope date it, proving to be 2,000 years old. Dang. Nice little things right up here are called soda straw stalactites. They are hollow on the inside, so you could use them as a straw. But it'd be a five hundred dollar straw and make your drink taste like <laughs> rust. To eat it, I guess. We have our upside down state of Florida, and we have Bessie the milking cow, our most active stalactite in the cave. She drips forty times per minute. Whoa! Oh, there it goes. That's like. Wow. Am I catching your mouth? Look up here. Oh, it hit me. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Did anyone happen to get dripped on? Yeah. Yes. That is called a cave kiss. It's supposed to bring good luck. If you didn't get dripped on, don't feel too bad. 
That's actually right underneath the men's restroom. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, you said open your mouth to catch it. Yeah. I had, on, my, on my last tour, or not last tour, but a few tours ago, there was a Boy Scout group, and one of them was doing that. And then when I, he's like, oh, I got it, I got it. And I was like, yeah, that's the men's restroom. And he, yeah. you know, he regretted his decision oh, out there. Yeah, it was funny. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. We experienced the worst drought in Lost Sea history and lost 30 feet of water. The dog had to be moved from where it is now to about the center of the lake, where you got to take maybe a two minute boat ride and feed a handful of fish. It's also where we got the nickname, the Lost Puddle. We still haven't lived that one down. Thankfully in 2011, the lake was restored to how it is now and we no longer have that issue. In fact, it's usually the opposite. But thanks to our pump system, any excess water is just cleaned up and used in our facilities. So if any of you wash your hands later, you're using the lake water. Pretty cool, and we knocked out that water bill. <laughs> but anyways, you can now say you've sailed across America's largest underground lake. Cross that one off your bucket list. How deep is this underground? 140 feet. Whoa, that's awesome. 140 feet. Mm -hmm. We're actually, right over there, is the first parking lot. When you come in the lot, see the one on the right. Oh, really? Yeah, right there. Right over there? That's right cool. The first parking lot. That is crazy. Hey, everyone, hold on to your hats. We're coming in full speed. What's the water temp? Do you know? 56 degrees. 56. Now listen, if I absolutely demolish this parking spot, don't record this. <laughs> oh, I'm recording. No, it's too late. It, it, luckily, it's dark. <laughs> I got a memory like a trap. Really. I, don't, I don't remember, and I'll come back again just so I can Just so, as soon as I go to do my boat ride, you come back. Yeah, they, they can't park. I don't trust her. Girl. I know the guy's smoke. She wrecks every time. <laughs> All right, you guys just remain seated. I'll let you know when it's safe to exit and brace for impact. Oh, God, right in your shot, sorry. No, you're good. Could, could have been worse. Be worse. How did they get the boats down here? They brought down, down three pieces. pieces. Three pieces, really? Welded over that beach, and you see that gate they just pushed in. That's cool. Oh. oh, yeah, I see it. That's crazy. There we go. We figured it out. How the boats got down here. They said they break them up in three pieces. Carry them down. And then there's a welder back over here that they weld them together. That's freaking sweet. 140 feet below ground. This clear lake that is full of trout. All right, so that is it for the tour of the lake. That was pretty awesome. And these trout are freaking huge especially for only being two years old. But the video is not over. So now I'm gonna show you all the entire tour of the cave. So if y'all wanna see that, keep watching. If not, you can click away here. But uh, yeah, this cave is huge and it was pretty cool to explore. So let's head back to the top and check out the cave. It's very important you stay on the trail, stay behind me the entire time. There's no smoke inside the cave that goes for vaping as well. Also, no new litter, you're gonna see a ton of trash cans along the path as we continue. Number four is the most important. Do not break down or face any rock shoal formations inside the cave. That'll lead to a $50 to $500 Tennessee State fine. Now, we are good to keep going. Watch your step at the end of this tunnel. We're gonna make a right hand turn. <laughs> All right, up here, watch your head. There is a low hanging rock. Good, just keep filling in. We all need to fit on the elevator. Now we'll look right up here to my right. Our first stop is the Cascades. One of the more beautiful formations we'll get to see it is sort of cheating as it is two formations. Now the first one is the amber colored drapery at the top and below that the white colored flowstone. That flowstone is made out of calcium carbonate and that drapery is made out of iron oxide. If you didn't know iron oxide is just rust, it's not anything special. Do you have another name for that drapery though? That's cave bacon. You guys can see why we call it that with the lights out. Oh, it does resemble a bacon run. I'll give you guys another second or so to check this out. When you're ready, just follow me right back up. Same way we came down. Of course, watch your head. That longing rock is still right where it was. It's one of the more active formations we'll see today. Of course, you can see it's made of stalactites, stalagmites, and the very large stalactose, stalagmites. 
That is a complicated name, so I'll just call these pillars. You can also call these columns. For the other two names, just think stalactites hang tightly to the ceiling, and stalagmites might one day reach the ceiling. When they do, they form together with stalactite above it and end up making those big pillars. Before we keep going, it's going to go from concrete to gravel to clay. Of course, just watch your step as that transition takes place. We're also going to be going through the main part of the cave. So if you have any hearing problems, anything like that, you're going to want to stay as close to me as possible. There will be a couple areas where I'm walking and talking, so either way, you're going to want to try and keep up. Now, as you guys come down, look over to the right. The room that you're walking around is the council chambers. It's around the 1820s when the Cherokee chief Craighead came down here after acquiring the area through the, either the Okoe or Hiawassee land grants. He would come down here in old meetings as it is a nice 58 degree temperature year round. That means no matter if it's hot or cold up at the surface, he would always come down here and have those meetings. Now, we do have a couple remnants from that time to know this. One of those right up here on the ceiling in the center of my light, you guys are gonna see a darker patch. Now that's from their campfires. The smoke from those would rise up, seep into the rock, staining it permanently. About 100 years after that, in the 1920s, a group of teenagers were down here. Guys, don't touch the rocks up there. A uh, hundred years later in the 1920s, a group of teenagers were down here. They found a couple pieces of arrowhead pottery and broken pieces of jewelry. We still have those there up in the glass showcase. You guys can check those out after the tour. Right up here above me are what we call antidotes. Antidotes get the name from the Greek word anthos, which means flowers. Of course, we call these our cave flowers. They're extremely rare. In fact, they only call eight caves the entire world their home. Most of those are right here at the Lost Sea. And that makes them one of the two reasons we are a U.S. registered natural landmark. These are so rare because they are a very slow growing kind of stalactite that only form in lake formed caves due to evaporation. It means they only grow about a centimeter every thousand or so years. Well, these right here, these antidotes are not growing. These are inactive. That just means they're not growing right now. They could become active later. That's likely not gonna happen, especially while the time we're alive. Now, I'll show you guys some active anthidites here in a second. That'll be after this group passes us. We are gonna have to go under that low hanging rock right there though. Of course, that is covered in more formations. You definitely don't wanna to touch any of that. Anthidites, which some of those are, have a fun $5,500 fine per square cubic centimeter broken, and they are very brittle. So you really don't wanna to touch any of this, guys. The room we are currently walking through is the kill room. It is the third large room we have access to in the entire cave system. That makes it 600. It's not very likely you're going to get to see those at this point. Pretty much most all of those have fallen down. You can think about something very similar as a old red barn on the side of the road. That's pretty much the same red color. A lot of thin white and black writing. All this is common vandalism. A lot of it took place in the 1920s or the late 60s. So you can ignore all of that. That 1863 is all the way back here. As you look at these dates though, don't get too distracted. Because if you do, you're likely going to hit your head on this low hanging rock. Is a very special low hanging rock. Now it's called the wishing rock. It got that name because if you hit your head on it, you're gonna wish you didn't. <laughs> As we continue, just watch your step going into this room. It is a little steep, and there's a small drop off on the right hand side. Now, this is a very simply named room, just the hanging rock chamber. You can see where it gets its name from the hanging bedrock pendants above us. And this room would have been formed by a little pool of rushing water, and that water would have came from right where we just came, as well as from right up here. Now, if you're wondering what is up here, this is the way to the big room, second large room we have. At foot pit, they found the remains of a place to see in Jaguar. This is an absolutely massive cat. It was about eight feet long, not going its tail. If it were alive today, it would have weighed about 500 pounds. We no longer have the remains. They were sent to the Natural History Museum in New York. 
We do, however, have a replica of its head and of its pompera up the glass showcase once again for you guys to check out later. A couple years after that, in the early to mid-40s, the big room was a bar. It's a pretty big bar aptly named the Cavern Tavern. Held three dance floors, three moonshine stills, and a live band on the weekends. But one major flaw, though. Because of the pressure down here, you can drink up to three times as much alcohol without feeling any of the effects. They didn't know that. They thought they were being sold cheap or even fake alcohol. Got pretty mad. So mad, in fact, they rushed back up those 140 uneven clay steps. So as we say here, the higher they got, the higher they got. <laughs> they blacked out about three-fourths of the way, came tumbling all the way back down, taking out everyone and everything behind them. Oh, ten years after that, in the 50s, the big room was a fallout shelter. Now, it could have held 20,000 people for around two weeks. Of course, if you know anything about the area, we didn't need a fallout shelter. So we gave all that food away, different organizations or charities. We did keep it tiny little bit for ourselves. What we still have of it is all right over here. Now you can see those drums say drinking water. Tin cans just had salty crackers. Okay, the lights are in three, two, one. Here, you would go completely, permanently blind. After, after those two weeks, if you went back up the surface, more bad news. Your retinas would instantly burn. Now, because of that, it's not great to spend a long time down here, of course. It is a rather rare experience, though. Now, there's only two places in the world to see this light level naturally. That is at the bottom of the ocean, and this is this. Now, I'm going to get those lights back in three, two, one. Now, I'm going to stand back up. Uh, up here on the left, it gets a little bit low, so just watch your head and make sure you don't touch any of that. So, areas like that, this, form, this cave was formed by a lot of sources of water coming in, as opposed to a single source of water flowing through. So, with a lot of sources of water coming in, you're obviously going to need a lot of places for the water to go out. Right. And those are sort of in between areas, where water gets caught between two, and it sort of just cuts it. And, you need to remember, really, especially here, See that weird shell? Oh, yeah. That's where composition is different. So you'll have two kinds of rock here, sandstone and limestone. Limestone, of course, being much more solid. And the sandstone gets washed away. A good bit of you have probably already noticed the oddly glowing red hole right here. This is the Devil's Hole. There's a legend behind the Devil's Hole saying that if you've been bad for the following week and you look down there, you're going to see the face of the devil himself. And if you've been good, it says you won't see anything at all. Of course, you guys can have a chance to check that out in a second. Make sure you don't lean sit stand on that handrail. Don't go over it, don't go under it. That's a 13 foot drop straight down, tapers down at the side of a softball. As you make the turn to go look into the Devil's Hole, you're gonna go under the deepest point will be the entire door. That's 550 feet underground. Some of you are probably questioning that, seeing as we go downhill and have a the lake. But this is the deepest point, as deep as the lowest are pretty different. Deep is just thus the amount of rock you're currently directly under. And because there is a small mountain above us, that results with this being the deepest point. Alrighty, so over to the right is the baby Grand Canyon. Now we're going to be able to see it sort of looks like the Grand Canyon, forming the exact same way, flowing water slowly cut through that stone. You might notice there's no water in the bottom. That water source has just been inactive for a long period of time. Sort of a good thing though, it means we can walk through the baby Grand Canyon. When we do, that's where it's going to look a little bit more like the actual Grand Canyon. On our way down though, it's going to be very, very steep. If you need to use a handrail, use the metal one to the right. The wood one to the left is going to end about halfway, and it's not nearly as sturdy. Do you have to pump fresh air down here? What? Do you have no, to we do not. It's yeah. naturally ventilated. Oh, that's cool. Alright, so before we go through the baby Grand Canyon, you guys can see this wall to the left has a lot of rubble on top of it. In this little valley here, there's a lot of rubble down there. And the wall to the left is very, very brittle. If you were to touch any of this, it's going to cause a large section, probably more than one section, to fall. As long as you don't touch it, it will stay exactly where it is. It's been the exact same ever since I've started working here. Being fair, that was only about two days ago. It's <laughs> been the same. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, water you hear out of us is Crystal Falls. It is one of the three natural sources of water for the lake. It is the only visible one. Uh, the two others are underground springs. Of course, we won't see those. Next to Crystal Falls is one of the three original moonshine stills from the Cavern Tavern. We have another one that's next to those log cabins being used as a flower bed. We don't actually know what happened to the third one, though. A lot of people, especially us, the tour guides, think it was stolen. More importantly, you guys can see it's going to be pretty steep down that way. Near that waterfall, it is very, very slick. This is the hardest part of our walk. On the entire tour on the way out of here is going to be about 14 stories. This part alone will be seven stories down and back, all steep, all slick. Now, you do not have to go down if that worries you. You can just wait right over there at our first rest stop where those benches are. That's going to be about a... On the way back up, it's a rest stop. If you don't want to go down now, it's going to be a real long rest stop. It'll take about 20, 25 minutes. You are also going to miss the lake, the boat ride, the Ben Sands on Crystal Falls, and the moonshine still. A pretty big chunk of our tour. Now, if you do go down and at the bottom decide you cannot physically make it up, I am the one who is left to help you back up. I cannot carry you, and I'm not going to carry you. So you will be stuck down there. <laughs> now, if that doesn't sound great to you, and you don't think you can go down or come back up, please just wait right over here. And what, and what time do y'all turn the lights out? Because it'd be dark down there, too. <laughs> There's the waterfall in the cave. The moonshine still. That's pretty cool. All right, uh, where we are right now is the Ben Sands Tunnel. It's discovered and named after, of course, Ben Sands. He found it in 19 <coughs> 1905 as a 13-year-old boy. At the time, he was exploring around the cave when he came across a bicycle tire-sized hole. It crawls all the way through this hole, and eight feet later, he comes out the other end to be knee-deep in water. Couldn't see too far as he only had an oil lantern, so he actually balls up the clay we've been walking on and throws it as far as he can in every single direction. He only hears splashes, so he knows he found a pretty big body of water. Of course, he gets excited, rushes up, and tells his father what he found. His father doesn't believe him. In fact, it takes about two months for him to convince his father to come down here and check it out for himself. And sadly for Ben, when he came down here the first time, there was a drought. Two months later, when him and his father returned, the drought receded, water level to risen back up, and the entrance was no more than a muddy puddle. Because of that, they couldn't make their way down, and no one believes Ben Sands for about 60 years. Well, 60 years after, there was another drought. Some explorers happened to be down here, and they had heard the Ben Sands rumor. So they found Ben Sands' phone number, called him up, asked him a couple questions about the tunnel that they had found, and about the lake. Now, it does answer every question perfectly, getting the credit for discovering both. We do have a plaque of Ben Sands up lobby. You guys can check that out after the tour. As you can see, we're not crawling. This area has been blasted through. It's the second area of the entire cave to be blasted through. The first and only other is that yellow tunnel. So if you're not a metal tube, you can still see all the drill and blast marks all around us. You guys in the back that can't see where I'm pointing above you or to the left, you'll be able to find a couple. Now, you're not going to see them to the right-hand side. The right-hand wall is completely man-made. It is all the rubble from that blasting. We did not want to haul it back up, so we just pushed it over and made this wall right here. Now, as we continue, there's going to be a lot of blowing and rocks all through here. This is also going to be the slickest part of our walk, so really watch your step. All right, guys, so we made it down 140 feet, and we're now back at the lake, which is what you already saw at the beginning of the video. But, guys, this was an awesome, awesome tour. Pretty awesome find for me randomly driving down the road and finding it. I'm happy I stopped. It was definitely worth the time and the money. I definitely recommend it. If you're ever in Tennessee, come by, check it out. It is awesome. All right, we are done with the tour. That was freaking amazing. We survived. All right, guys, that was the tour. Hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace. Ah!